got hit. The Holy Spirit came. So we weren't seeking it. We weren't like pursuing it. It's just the Holy Spirit came and validated and verified and bore witness to everything we were saying in that meeting. Hey guys, welcome to the Jesus King podcast. Hopefully you're doing well. Today, I've got Abraham with me. Hey man. It's been ages since it you've been, been on the podcast. It has been a month. Has it? Wait, what are we? Where are we now? <laughs> yeah, it's been it's a, very a big long blur. Time. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. always since, been since the New Year's podcast we did. Oh yeah, that's yeah. true. Since that's then, true. so yeah. yeah, how's the New Year going, man? It's going all right. <laughs> We're persevering. I'm just waiting until next Christmas. Anyways, um, today we're speaking about spiritual gifts. Yeah. And I think something that a lot of people encounter, maybe that's the first question we can tackle is, do you actually think that we have the spiritual gifts today? Mm. Big one. Big one. Yeah. Um, Are you saying it because it's suspenseful or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to draw in the suspense here yeah. today with all the... Or is it a, viewers, a very easy question that can be answered? I think it's an easy question. Yeah. I personally, looking through the scriptures, looking historically, but mainly the scriptures, I think it's an easy question Okay. with an easy answer. All right. But we're living in a day and age that has been kind of consumed and like it permeates with like a naturalistic ideology. You know what I mean? All right. Like we're become a lot more atheistic in the way that we're looking at the world even in the church as well mm. so we're kind of drawing away from the spiritual and more the logical more the natural more the what the senses relate to okay. you know what i mean yeah. and i think that's affected how we view spiritual gifts how we view anything spiritual as well and so we have had in christianity within I would say the last century, two centuries, the idea of cessationism taking like rising okay. a lot more and becoming yeah. more prominent. So for those of you that don't know, there's two schools of thought with Christianity, right? What we would say, the Orthodox Christian view is, is that spiritual gifts are for today because yeah. there's That's no continuism. continuationism. Yeah. So like we're continuing the same way the apostles lived. The same way the first church, century church lived, even the first four centuries of the church exhibiting the spiritual gifts, you know, they're prophesying, they're preaching, they're, they're using the spiritual gifts the Spirit has given them for the edification of the church, mm. for the edification of believers, for the, for, as a sign as well for the unbelievers. So that's something that it was kind of standard. Okay. Um. But we've come to a place where that's kind of uncomfortable for some people in our culture, in our day and age, in a more logical society where they don't want to see a spiritual, they don't want to see something outside of the norm, outside of the what we can see, touch, taste, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. And so cessationism has grown. Cessationism means that after the death of the last apostle, that is, you know, the apostle John, after his death, that's it. They were the apostolic gifts, they were apostolic signs, and those gifts, those spiritual gifts, the miraculous gifts of God, those spiritual gifts are no longer in use today. Okay. And and there are some people that believe after the Bible was put together, the oh, New yeah, Testament. Oh, yeah, after the canonization. So, yeah. so yeah. there's different viewpoints there, even yeah. with the cessationist camp. But yeah. Yeah, that's very interesting. Well, if it's an apostolic sign or gift, then um, those who received it in the Church of Corinthians, were yeah. they all apostles? Yeah, well, what they say is it's... So we want to give them their due. They say that it's the apostolic age. Okay, apostolic So age. not just for the apostles, but the apostolic age. So when the apostles were on the earth, these were the signs given not just to them, but to even the people in the church to validate and verify their ministry. Oh, that's interesting. And that's that's the argument yeah. there. And so, how, how but, would, but the yeah. question, sorry, the question I would ask is, that's the argument they, they use, but where is that in the scriptures? Yeah, because what I'm thinking is Acts chapter 2. 
Mm-hmm. Joel's prophecy, Joel's prophecy yeah. says this is to you, your children, your children's children, and all those who believe. Mm-hmm. So did the apo- apostles outlast those people's children, their children's mm-hmm. children, and those who believe? Yeah. Well, that's the that's a good question. Yeah. Um, from the prophetic viewpoint of Joel chapter 2 and Acts chapter 2. Because that, that one, it seems like it's the, it's, you know, it's nailing in the coffin. Like that's just yeah. the last hit of the hammer. But then they'll say, well, that was a prophecy from Joel talking about, you know, that first, second, third century of the apostolic movement. And then, you know, the canonization of the Bible. And then that, that was it. Okay. So those few generations. So wow. then so then we look at that and we're like, all right, well, let's say that's true, which I don't see that in scripture. Mm-hmm. That there that was the cessationist argument. It is true, it is validated, it's verified. How would that affect the way that Christians have ministered throughout history? How would that affect the way we minister today? Because we're no longer going to be ministering through the enabling of the gifts of the spirit we're ministering through mainly just our own wisdom and our own intellect and our own intelligence. Right. Yeah. And I think that's a very dangerous precedence because it, it, it takes reliance away from the spirit of God and puts it on us. And now we have to kind of use our own logic, our own mind, our own strength to reach the world. And I don't think we can do that. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay, enough of this view, because it's not even biblical. It's not. But I just, I just wanted to bring it out because yeah. most of our viewers will probably come across a lot of YouTube channels and a lot of podcasts where they're going to be talking about this. Okay. And have yeah. that mindset. And our, our viewpoint is let's go to the scriptures and look at what that says. Mm. Well, I hear this a lot, which is a bit, I find it, contradicting in itself they said we don't need the spiritual gifts we have the bible mm. and you're like we do need the spiritual gifts because, because we have the exactly. bible and because the bible spells it out very clearly yeah. because we believe in the inerrancy infallibility and the totality of scripture right yeah. so we look at the scriptures speaking about your spiritual gifts that you are called and each person is called and has been given gifts by the Spirit for the edification of the church. Mm. So we're building up the church. We're building up um, those that we are around. So it could be a word of knowledge, wisdom, word of prophecy, all in order. Of course, we're not, you know, we're not going in hysteria, yep. and we see the extremes of both yeah. of those um, when it's done out of wisdom and out of order. Um, and we don't want to encourage that either. But we want to encourage the viewpoint that Scripture has that. This is a good thing. It's mm. it's the will of God here. So if it's the will of God, then we should be pursuing it. Okay. Uh, actually, I was going to ask you that question is um, some people, they're like, okay, you've got me. You know, there's nothing in the Bible that says mm. that the spiritual that is, gifts yeah. have yeah. seized. It's part of the spiritual age. And we can get to 1 Corinthians 13, right? Mm. It speaks about tongues, prophecies, yeah. seizing. That's not a problem. Um, but fair enough, your argument is right, it's solid, okay, spiritual gifts are here today. I'm not interested in them. I'm okay. still going to read my Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you think there's anything in the Bible where, where it says it's not more of an option, it's, it's more something that you need in your life? I'm going to use another example that's similar to that. We had We had a few people that when we were ministering, they're like, I love God, um, but I don't want to be baptized, like physical water baptism, right? I love God. I read my scripture. I believe in him. So you're saved, right? But you're disobeying. Disobedient, yeah. You're being disobedient in your walk, right? So that will stunt your spiritual growth. So you can say, yes, I don't want to pursue the spiritual gifts, but it will stunt your spiritual growth. And so when we look at the two parts of of the life of the Christian, that is justification, then you have sanctification, which is a longer process, right? That spiritual growth, that being conformed to the image of Christ, that will be stunted. 
you know, the whole will of God after you are saved is that you are conformed to the image of Christ. Mm. Who on this earth had, was more involved with the spiritual gifts than Christ? Right? Yeah, that's true. And so that's, that's the goal. That's who we're supposed to you know, emulate and imitate. It's Christ. And if he was filled with the spirit and if he, if the spirit of God who ordained him and anointed him, used him to not just edify, but to start and initiate the church, mm. then shouldn't we be desiring to do the same? That's yeah. the argument of scripture. That's the argument of the spiritual gifts. And so if we have each and every member of the church with that mindset to be like Christ, each one's going to be using a spiritual gift to raise that body of yeah, Christ. That's great. Um, and so for the person that will say, well, look, I'm not really interested in that kind of thing. I just, I just want to read my Bible and that's all. I don't see how you can read your Bible with conviction through the lens of the Spirit of God with a heart of humility and not start desiring it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because if you, you go from the book of Acts, even the, the gospel accounts, because it's all there, but from the book of Acts onwards, it's so filled with especially like the fruit of the gifts of the Spirit. So like like what that produces when people are walking in the gifts of the Spirit, the the results that are there. Like in one day, Peter preaches through the power of the Spirit and 3,000 people are added, right? And that's not they're not false converts. They're real converts that were pierced in the hearts. And this is one of the things. Preaching is a spiritual gift, is it not? Mm. That's, a, that's a spiritual gift. Peter, Peter was walking in that spiritual gift on that day and 3,000 people pierced in the heart. And this is one of the things. There are people who go out and they preach through the logic of their mind rather than the power of the spirit, um, because they're not really walking in that spiritual um, reality. That this is a, a gift from the spirit. It is for the spirit. It is by the spirit and to the glory of God. Right. Yeah. And so they're relying on their own strength rather than the strength of the spirit and the word. And so it doesn't really pierce the hearts of the people. It's like it's not really raising the dead. Which yeah. is, you know, we we used to listen to Ravenhill, and he's like, "I'm preaching to dead people every week, in the hopes and in the power of the Spirit that they be raised from the dead, right?" Mm. And that's the goal, and that's yeah. the goal of the spiritual gifts. He was speaking about spiritually dead people, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Just Sorry. in case people Sorry. think that he's going to to the cemeteries. Cemetery. And... Um, yeah. But that's a that's a pretty good point that you brought up. Is that that was the way of the church? Yeah, it was just normal. Yeah. It was the standard. And First Corinthians 14, right in the beginning, says desire spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. that you may prophesy. You know, there they, they were certain things that he viewed as the more important, the, the yeah. better gifts. But for the sake of the church. For the sake of the church. Yeah. Yeah. And he also says in Romans 15 that as he was traveling, he preached the gospel with powers and wonders, mm -hmm. right? So that's very important. And the point that you were always like kind of emphasizing on was Jesus, the apostles, Jesus, the apostles. And I think a lot of times people might get turned off from their spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. It's because they might see the abuse of it in the church. Oh, yeah. And they're like, I don't want to be like that. Yeah. yeah. And you're, you're not meant to be like that. Mm -hmm. You're meant to be like Christ and his apostles when you are ministering in those in those gifts that that's an important thing because i think both of us we probably grew up in this in the church um mm. there's hyper the hyper charismatic movement yeah. as well and they turn people off the spiritual use because of the abuses so mm. you know they they kind of say well if you don't speak in tongues you're not saved kind yeah. of thing and like basically in order for you to prove that you are saved and that you've been truly born again you need to speak in tongues right now you know and so what they would do you know like I remember the altar calls when we were younger and whatnot, and they'd be like, uh, "Just repeat after me. Start, start getting your tongue used to it, you know, and just start oh, getting yeah. into the and and they're just speaking gibberish and they're forcing the person to speak gibberish and the heart of the person responding, they want to truly be saved and they're like, well, if this is what I need to do, then I need to do. So there were all these abuses and then they're like, well, someone might be prophesying and that's their spiritual gift. But if they're not praying in tongues, then they're not saved. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like 
they're not viewing the different groups of the gifts of God. They're just saying, here's this one thing that we can see in here, right? But the spiritual gifts often can be very subtle. Do you know what I mean? There are times where you may be, the Spirit may be using you and working through you, and you may not even know it. You're speaking to someone just in a normal conversation, and you say something and it touches them, and they're like, how did you know that? Mm. Like, we've had a lot of these incidences, you know, that's a spiritual gift and God is using you. And so we have to look through the lens of the word of God, not through our experiences in churches or abuses and whatnot, because that can be a very dangerous thing. Yeah, wow, well, that's, that's pretty important. Um, but thank God that we actually grew up with people who were very solid in their teaching. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't personally go through any of that. I've even ha- were accused that like someone, I remember people would uh, message me or like it was at the time, Facebook or something like that. Like, oh, so you believe you're safe when you speak in tongues. Yeah. I'm like, when did we ever say that? <laughs> well, yeah, where do we say that? And and I, I would hear it from outsiders, hmm. right? Hmm. So, People that didn't even know us, eh? like they, they barely knew our ministries, yeah. they didn't know. Yeah. So it was like, you know, looking back at it, I'm like, man, it's such a blessing mm. to grow up at a church that was very solid and in its teaching, mm. but also active in the gifts, yeah. Yeah. you know? So you did not see all these abuses. If someone spoke in tongues, there was no interpretations after a while, they mm. keep it to themselves. Mm. Um, people recognize their gifts because we were pursuing them. Yeah. Uh, but I remember before we started to pursue the gifts, um, doing some work with the youth, we went through six weeks of Bible teaching. Yeah. We went through, for example, 1 Corinthians 12, 13 and 14, verse by verse. Mm. Uh, we unpacked it all. We went through Acts. Um, you got Romans 15. You got other places in the Bible and we said, okay, let's be, um, let's have the right heart as we approach those things. Mm. And we believe as we're having that right approach, God is always faithful Amen. to lead us in his way. Amen. A- and that's, that's what strikes me a bit odd is when you have people, they say, but what if it's demonic yeah. or what if it's your imagination? Like you don't, realize that the person that's leading you is God Amen. and he's faithful to you. I'm not going to let my son go through this. Why would God let his own children go through that? Yeah. And that's what you see in Luke. Jesus says, you're evil. You give good gifts to your children. Mm. How much more will your father in heaven give, give you the Holy gift. Spirit to those who ask? So the, the whole point that if evil parents still lead their children in the right way, right? Because they want the best for them. Yeah. How much more is a good father would lead his own children in the right path? Of course, yeah. And yeah. we were studying it more. God opened up our eyes to it. And we started to see like healing prophecies and all these things. And we would do everything biblical, like examine it. Someone say something, don't just believe it. Yeah. And 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 we started to which see is the, which is a spiritual gift as well, the gift of discernment. Gift yeah. of discernment. And we started to see how the gifts were being established in the church. And it was such a blessing. Yeah. Were there some hiccups along the way? Of course there were. But we were learning a lot. Mm. We were learning a lot of that. Um maybe we can touch on because um, th- this is a big topic. It's huge. We could do like a whole series on yeah. just the spiritual gifts. M- maybe we can do something like that on it. But maybe we can touch up on mm-hmm. baptism of the Spirit, mm-hmm. right? We spoke about the gifts of the Spirit. Obviously, baptism of the Spirit comes before the gifts, right? Some people would hold on to that. Um, if you're a Christian, everyone is baptized by the Spirit. Mm-hmm. Okay, like Acts chapter 2. Uh, but some people say, no, that's something that you need to pursue. Yeah. That, that's something yeah. that once you're so, saved. So there's, a, there's a difference they're saying between the receive. There's no difference between receiving and the baptism, the immersion. Yeah. 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 So, so would you find a distinction between the indwelling of the spirit and baptism of the spirit? Yeah. Yeah. Or would you say that's just mushed up? 
No, no, because so you look at it in <clears throat> John chapter twenty. Yeah. After Jesus has been raised, and he sees the the disciples, and he breathes on them, and he says, "Receive the Spirit." All right. Okay. So they've received the Spirit. Their belief in him now the Spirit is indwelling in them. But it's not until Acts chapter two that they receive what the baptism. The baptism. It's the overflow. It's that immersion. Mm. But there's another aspect of this. Is like the baptism of the Spirit. It's not just this one-time event that happens once and then that's it. It's like there's this continual thing, okay. right? So when Paul talks about being continually filled with the Spirit, yeah, you know, it's like there's times where, you know, we've had some amazing moments mm. where we've, the Holy Spirit comes upon us, right? And we're just, we're being utilized by the Spirit and we're flowing in these gifts and we're doing amazing things. And then kind of, you know, life gets in the way and then you need that filling again. Yeah. You need that baptism again. Um, so that's for the person who has the indwelling of the Spirit, right? So the Spirit's living in them, but the Spirit also needs to kind of consume them. Okay. Baptize cool. them, flow over them, that they may be consumed. Because we live in a world that oftentimes it corrupts our minds it kind of plays around with our minds. And the whole, the the overflowing of the Spirit, the baptism of the Spirit, it consumes those things. It burns the, that chaff away okay. from us, you know. Brings restoration. Brings restoration. And, so and, and I think that's an important distinction to make because we can be indwelt by the Spirit and we're saved. And of course, we're believers, but we're not walking in that power in ministry, in edification of the church, in those who are around us. And I, and I mean, we probably all have had seasons in our life where we're like that, where we know we're saved, mm. and we know that we're sons of God, but we're not walking in this power, that same power we see in Acts, the book of Acts, mm. that same power we see Jesus walking in, you know? Yeah. So, like, just in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says... When the Spirit come, you will receive power. Mm -hmm. So they weren't receiving the Holy Spirit again because no, they already received they already it in received John. John yeah. um, after death, resurrection, they believed in Jesus. Um, so the person of the Spirit is for everybody. Every Christian, every person that receives Jesus, yeah, um, they receive the Spirit. The Spirit dwells in them. Baptism is a separate event. I'm gonna bring a verse. Um, which sometimes people might use in regards to um, saying everyone's baptized. Mm. Uh, and that's 1 Corinthians. There's three. The other two are very weak. Yeah. This one is more often uh, spoken about. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and you look at verse 13. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, mm -hmm. whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Yeah. So they say, well, Jews and Greeks, so that's basically You've the whole church, yeah. we've yeah. all been baptized by the spirit into one body. Um, do you have any comments on it? Yeah. Con I sure do, but yeah. Context is key. Yeah. You know, context is always key because if you read the entire book of Corinthians, all right, his main argument is talking about, you know, these factions that are between the Jews and the Gentiles, the rich and the poor, and yeah. he's saying that you're all divided, right? The context of that is not talking about the power of ministry and the dunamis of the Holy Spirit. He's talking about the fact that You've all been through the power of Christ. You've been saved. You're regenerated. You're regenerated. And he's talking about that initial baptism in Christ. The same way that the Jews were baptized. You know, Peter talks about this in Paul. We're baptized through the Red Sea, right? Yeah. Right. So that there's this unification and there's this identity they all have. They've all crossed the Red Sea. You've all crossed over from death to life. You're yeah. baptized by the Spirit. By right? cool. But he's not talking about baptism of the Spirit, of the Spirit. which is Acts chapter 1 and 2, yeah. right? Um, and Joel chapter 2. That's a completely separate thing. So context is very important because that was not talking about the dunamis of the Spirit where you the Holy Spirit comes upon you and gives you the spiritual gifts to be able to be empowered for ministry, yeah. right? Which is the whole point of the spiritual gifts. It's the empowerment of the ministry of the servant of God. Yeah. Um, 
And I would say, in all honesty, if every single person was empowered and baptized by the Spirit, if every single person in the church, as soon as they become believers, are baptized with the Spirit, and that's a hundred percent fact, mm -hmm. we would not have the weak church we have today. Yeah, cool, cool. I truly believe yeah. that. And, and I think in the verse, if you read it yourself, First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse thirteen, um, words do matter. Mm. And the way they are structured also matters. So because we see the word spirit and baptize, we just assume yeah. it's Acts chapter 2. But if you look at the verse, who's doing the baptizing? Mm. It's the spirit. And what are you being baptized into? The body of Christ. In Acts chapter 2, they received what John the Baptist was talking about, that Christ will baptize you into the spirit. Mm -hmm. So there are two different agents that are baptizing. In Acts chapter 2, it's Christ baptizing in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. But in 1 Corinthians 12, it's the Spirit baptizing into the body of Christ. So if if you really care about the words that you're reading, yeah. you will see that these are two different baptisms. Yeah, and they're different roles that they're, yeah. they're playing. Yeah. They're both extremely important. One is for salvation, one is for for the power of ministry yeah. to glorify God. Amen. And there's much more baptisms in the Bible than just oh, yeah. water baptism and spirit baptism. There's like seven, eight different baptisms. Yeah. And they're Even if all you wanna, unique. If you want to go back in the Old Testament, you know, you look at the yeah. different baptisms, the ceremonial cleansing, all of that, uh, which are kind of types. You look in the New Testament, you know, um, we're baptized into the body. We're baptized in Christ. We're baptized... Um, in the Holy Spirit. So there's so many different ways that we can view it. And like you said, words matter, context matters, and it all does affect the way we view the Spirit's role in our lives as well. Cool, cool. Well, I'm going to ask you a question. Mm. You believe in spiritual gifts. Of course. Have you been baptized by the Spirit? Yeah, I think we both yeah. know. <laughs> We're, just for the sake of the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could, I, could, could, you, share, could you share a testimony about that? Do, do you have something that you'll be like, that is a miracle. I'll, I'll share a testimony about the baptism of the Spirit. Probably one of the most important days, I think, um, in my spiritual life in that regard. Because I remember earlier on in our ministries, you and I, um, we, were, we were doing series and we were teaching on the spiritual gifts and we were really pursuing it. Um, but up until that time, I don't think that I had ever experienced something that would reflect Acts chapter 2, or that would reflect what we were teaching, mm. right? We were studying, we were teaching, we were preaching on this, but I hadn't experienced it to that extent. Mm. And we were praying about it. And I remember this this one time mm -hmm. where someone from the church, one of the youth, he invited us over to his house because someone there wanted to speak to us about you know, the spiritual gifts. So I'm like, okay, let's go. We both said, all right, let's go. We'll have a conversation. And there was a man there who was a staunch cessationist, mm -hmm. totally against the spiritual gifts. And he wasn't there to discuss. He wasn't there to dialogue. He was there to attack, right? And I remember we got there. And as soon as we got there, it was just like, Attack, attack, attack from the get-go. The guy wanted war. <laughs> nothing biblical, though. Nothing. Well. No, no, nothing at all. It was, it, was, it was to the point where it got, it got to a point where he was blaspheming the Spirit. And we were like, we need to walk away. Because he was saying, everything we are saying that we attribute to the Spirit from the Word of God, everything we're attributing to the Spirit of God and saying it's his gift, he's saying that's from the devil which is exactly what the Pharisees were doing with Jesus. Yeah. They were saying all the works he was doing was done through the devil. And Jesus is like, hey, man, that's blasphemy of the Spirit. That's the one thing that you won't be forgiven for. And we, we, I began to feel danger and dread for that guy. And we got to a point where we're like, we need to leave. And I felt so unclean after that conversation. Like it was just a dirty feeling being there, listening to what he was saying. And we ended up just leaving. We're like, you know what? We're going to go. God bless you. But we can't keep this conversation up because this is not a discussion. This is not someone who's asking questions genuinely. This is someone who is saying that what the Spirit is doing through you and what we're teaching is from the devil. So we ended up leaving. We're like, look, we've done everything we can to 
produce the scriptures, bring them out and tell this man, but nothing. It was just falling on deaf, deaf ears. And I felt a bit discouraged. I'm like, you know what? That, don't worry. Let's just go home. And it's not as though there were doubts in our minds. We knew what we were saying was from scripture, but it kind of felt like, well, no, whatever. If, if it's not for everyone, it's not for everyone. But I remember we were going home. You were about to drop me off and you're like, as you were about to drop me off, we're like, let's go for just one lap. Maybe we just go for a bit of a prayer. And as soon as we went, got hit. The Holy Spirit came. So we weren't seeking it. We weren't like pursuing it. It's just the Holy Spirit came and validated and verified and bore witness to everything we were saying in that meeting, in that discussion. Like we were, it was it was filling us, overflowing. We were speaking in tongues, we were prophesying. We were, it was just awesome stuff. And that was, to me, my day of Pentecost because it bore witness to everything we had been teaching previously on it. It bore witness to everything we were preaching about the spiritual gifts. It was prob- It was the most important time in my spiritual life, I would say. And from that moment, it didn't matter what anyone said in their skepticism towards the things of the Spirit or the baptism of the Spirit, it didn't matter. I knew what we experienced. I know it was from the Word of God, right? Because it's not like we were imagining this. It's not like we were saying, you know, like trying to manufacture something out of the flesh. We weren't even seeking it. We weren't even looking for it in that day. It was of the Spirit. It hit us so hard, right, that we never turned back. I never turned back from that. Cool, cool. Actually, we'll do some testimonies on that, yeah. how the Holy Spirit has been working in our ministry, in our lives. Yeah. Um, that'd be actually a good good yeah. video to do. Yeah. Um, well, God bless you. Take care and enjoy your time. Bye.